A warm welcome from the West Hollywood Book Fair. It's a wonderful Southern California day out here. And uh, so the warmth is from our heart to all of the wonderful viewers on Gorilla Reads. I'm Abu Zubair, author of the recently published historical novel, The Silent and the Lost. And this is my debut novel. I'll be reading an excerpt from it today. And uh, the excerpt is going to be from a chapter called the Mukti Bahini, which uh, means freedom fighters, and it is about gorillas. So intriguingly, we're talking about gorillas in Gorilla Reads. So that's a plus. Okay, a uh, little bit of a synopsis. In The Silence of the Lost, my historical novel, Alex Salim McKenzie, a war baby of Bangladesh, is adopted by the McKenzies, who lost Frank, their only son in Vietnam. Alex's search takes us into the boiling cauldron of clashes in East Pakistan in 1971. There, through the eyes of newlyweds, Nahar and Rafiq, we are immersed into the revolution that created Bangladesh. Today I'll be reading an excerpt from the end of the chapter, the Mukti Bahini, pages 177 through 179 in my novel, The Silent, The Lost. In this chapter, the Mukti Bahini, the freedom fighters, are in Ghazipur, East Pakistan, late May 1971. Just to key the viewers in to the scene, in this scene, in the heart of the revolution, these guerrillas, the Mukti Bahini, have just completed an operation to blow up a bridge and have lost two of their own comrades in a bloody battle. So here it is, the story of the unknown soldier and pages 177 from the Mukti Bahini. On a small rise, capped by an impenetrable canopy, the afternoon sun strained to reach through. The men shouldered and then placed jewels and Khalid's blood-covered bodies on the ground. Worried about a counterattack, the eight men hastily buried into the moist red earth with bayonets, clawing with their bare hands, trenching out two shallow graves. Without water to bathe the men, without white cotton clothes to cover them, they hurriedly wrapped them in two chadors. In a brown chador besmeared in blood, Rafiq and Sunil lifted Jewel's body. Rafiq held Jewel's head and Sunil his legs. Slowly they lowered the body into the earthen grave, watched earthworms move away as the dark, moist earth embraced one more soul. Gently, Rafiq touched Jewel's eyelids, shutting them forever. Bowing down, they placed him onto the floor of the grave. As Rafiq turned Jewel's turgid face west towards Kaaba, facing Mecca, a solitary tear fell from Rafiq's eyes onto Jewel's forehead. Now, Hassan and Raja placed Khalid's bloody corpse, covered in a chador, crimson and wet, in the grave. Rafiq turned Khalid's swollen, blood-streaked face slightly towards Mecca. He knelt on the mound of dirt and looked at the two men who gave everything for freedom, for a free Bangladesh. Rafiq stared at Jewel's face. A strange happiness shone there as if he was playing with the soft curly ringlets of his daughter's hair. And Khalid, once vivacious, effervescent, now lay quiet. A farmer's son, the soil that was under his fingernails all his young life, was now embracing him forever. Standing up, Rafiq crumbled a fistful of dirt onto the body of Khalid, then another onto the body of Jewel. The other men followed. Specks, handfuls covered the men, the good earth, motherland. Using the butts of the three not three rifle as spades, they pushed the dirt over the two small mounds. Side by side, where Khalid and Jewel could keep each other company forever. Forever they would be companions walking into the near eternity, laughing, joking, looking up at lush green, the moistness of the earth they fought, died for, keeping them warm. The men standing around the graves raised their hands in a Janaza funeral prayer. 
his head bent, Rafik stood with the seven others. In death, with their last drop of blood, they found that little ground, this earth, they fought so hard for, Bangladesh. Jewel didn't die here today. He died months ago in that village where his daughter stopped giggling. He died that day with his family. The onus of leadership now fell on Rafiq's shoulders. In the distance, he could see Jewel determined as he was to the very end. And he repeated to himself Jewel's words, courage and brains can defeat any enemy. Yes, Jewel, you showed what courage and brains can do today, but you knew, you knew from the start that you would never return from this mission. Rafiq herded his men, heavy with the burden of death, now veterans of war, to Arzagartola to regroup, to come to terms with the death of two of their own. Eight men, Rafiq, Sunil, Hassan, Raja, Habib, Tajul, Munju, and Karim. Silent in their mourning, lost in their thoughts, they trudged with heavy feet and heart on a narrow dirt path towards Agartola. Less two. They tried to speak, to comfort each other, but sorrow locked their lips. Rafiq touched the folded letter in his shirt pocket. Khaled had never given him an address for the unfinished letter, a letter to his ma. Where would he post it? to an unknown address, to a ma who waited for news. Pounding against his heart was Khaled's bright, beaming face, his earthy, heartfelt laughter, all in a single line etched in crimson. Ma died a beer, a hero.